In this video using Apple Motion, we're gonna build this infinite looping title background. If you're a patron, you'll be able to download this title and use it in your videos right now. Or if you don't feel like subscribing to Patreon, you can also pick it up as a one-time purchase on my Patreon store. Of course, the first thing we need to do is open Apple Motion. From there, I'm gonna select the Final Cut title and I'm gonna set the preset frame rate and duration to whatever I typically like to work with inside of Final Cut Pro. For me, I'm just gonna set it to 29 seven and push open. From there, I'm gonna select the title background and type text tiered layers and delete them. After that, let's first add a backdrop. So going over to our generators under the library tab, we can see down here that we have the gradient generator. Go ahead and click and drag that into the group. Let's rename this group to be background. From there, I'm gonna select the gradient. And if we want to adjust this gradient, the very easiest way to do that is to come down to the arrow tool and then select the adjust item tool. Now that we've done that, we have these on-screen controls and I'm just gonna drag them into position for how I want this gradient. After that, we can go on over to the inspector and locate the gradient. Let's expand the gradient and then I'm gonna select each of the colors I wanna work with. We can see that the brighter color is in the top right corner. Let's go ahead and set that to a nice light blue. And in the bottom left corner, I want this to be a very dark blue or even maybe black somewhere in there. That's looking really nice. After that, I wanna add a bit of texture. So with the gradient selected, let's go up to filters. Then we'll go down to stylize and select add noise. It's gonna look like an ugly mess. So let's jump over to the left side we can bring the amount way down. Let's change the type over to pink noise. We'll make it monochromatic. Then we can change the blend mode over to overlay. And then we can adjust our amount slider as necessary. And finally, I don't want this to be animated, so I'm going to disable auto animate. So now we have this gorgeously textured backdrop and it should be good to go. Let's collapse the background layer, right click, select new group, and now this will be our title group. With the title group selected, let's come down and select our title tool. I'm gonna click anywhere in the viewer and just type in whatever word I want to write. After that, let's go over to the left and find our size parameter and scale that up to a place that we're happy. And we can also adjust the alignment to be centered. From there, we're gonna go on over to the properties panel and locate the position. Right now it's off to the left side, so let's just right click on the position parameter and select reset parameter so it's directly in the center. Now with the subscribe text, we need to create the infinite versions of it in the backdrop. And we're gonna do this using a clone layer. A clone layer is exactly like the original layer, but we can apply special effects to it that will not affect the original layer. So what I mean by that is let's select our subscribe text, right click, and then go down to make clone layer. You can also achieve that with K. With our clone layer created, let's go ahead and drag that out of the title group. And this will create an entirely new group underneath the title group. Let's just call this the outline group. And from there, we need to go ahead and create an outline effect for our text. Because this is a clone layer and not a regular title, we can't just go in and select the outline mode that most titles have. But there's a specific reason we want to use a clone layer instead of a duplicate layer. By using a clone layer, this background element will receive all of the same fonts, scaling, and alignment that we set up for this original layer. So it's just gonna make our jobs way easier in the future. So first to get an outline, we're gonna use the stroke effect. To do that, we'll select our clone layer, then we'll go on up to filters, go down to border, and then select stroke. Now, if I move this clone layer down, you'll see that we have this outline, but we also still have the original text. So to get rid of that, let's go ahead and select hide source. Next, we need to tile the background. So let's select the outline group. From there, we'll go up to filters, go down to tiling and then select tile. You'll immediately notice a problem though. It's only tiling where our text is at the moment and we want it to be over the entire backdrop. That's because right now, Apple Motion sees this outline group as the same scale as the subscribed text, but we want it to see it as the scale of our entire project. This is super easy to fix. We'll just select the outline group, then we'll go over to the left side under fixed resolution and check this box. So now Motion knows for sure that this group is the size of our entire project. Right now we have a whole bunch of tiny titles though and we want them to be roughly the same size as the original. So let's go into the tile settings 
and we're going to select the scale. Right now it's set to three. Let's set this to a value of one, and now it is exactly the same scale. Additionally, I want to adjust the skew to make it look like it's going off at an angle. So we can just drag this up to a place where we're happy. I'm liking 0.25, that looks pretty nice to me. Finally, I don't really want the titles to be this close to the original position of our first title. So let's just go ahead and offset that by dragging it somewhere in here. Next, I wanna make it so this text is slowly drifting off to the top right corner. To do that, we'll go over to the left side under our tile parameter and locate the center value. From there, we can go to the right side, clicking this down arrow, we'll select add parameter behavior and we're going to select rate. With the rate parameter, it's going to continually add to that center parameter, thus giving us a nice continuous animation. We just need to tell it how fast to move. Now, if I set this all the way up to one, it's going to go really, really fast. So we just need to set this to something like 0.01. .01. And now it's got a nice slow drift to it. I also want to integrate it a bit better with the backdrop. So to do so, let's find the stroke filter that's been applied to the clone layer and we'll change the color. I actually happen to really like how setting it to white looks, you can do whatever you want. But additionally, I want it to blend in with the backdrop. So we're gonna use a blend mode to achieve that. We'll go up to the outline parameter, we'll go over to properties, and we'll locate the blend mode. Let's change it from normal to overlay. So if you ask me, this is looking really nice, but there's a few other steps I wanna take to bring it to that next level. But before we do, I just want to quickly mention that I'm super excited to announce I recently released my Apple Motion Masterclass. If you want to take your skills from knowing absolutely nothing about Apple Motion all the way to being able to use it in your everyday professional life, then you're definitely going to want to check it out. I have a discount for 20% off as a thank you for watching this video, which you can find in the description. That's enough sales pitch. Let's polish off this title. I want to make it look like this background has a depth of field effect on it. So to do that, let's select the outline layer, then we can go up to filters, go down to blur, and then select gradient blur. That's going to give me these on screen controls, which I can just quickly adjust to our liking. That's looking super nice to me. Additionally, I want to add a drop shadow onto our title. Now a lot of you who use Apple motion might suspect you would select the text, go to text, go to appearance, and then go down and select drop shadow and drag out the distance and do all that stuff. But you'll notice how that's actually adjusting the background and we don't want that. We just want it to only affect our title layer. So rather than applying it to the title itself, we're gonna need to go to the group which contains the title. That's because in motion, you can't apply a drop shadow directly to a title under the properties panel. So if I jump in properties with this group selected, you'll see we have drop shadow. If we go to the subscribe text, that's no longer there. So going back to the title, let's go ahead and enable drop shadow. We'll press show. We can drag up the distance. We can drag up the blur. We can even increase the opacity if we wanted to. And now we have this great drop shadow effect on our title. Just know that you're gonna need to publish this drop shadow effect by going over to the right and selecting publish if you wanna make changes over in Final Cut Pro. The very last thing I wanna add is a simple animation of the text flying in. So to do that, let's select our title that says subscribe. We'll go up to behaviors. We'll go down to text animation and we're going to select something called sequence text. The sequence text tool allows us to animate titles in various ways. To use it, let's go over to the left side and find the parameter. The parameter we first want to adjust is the opacity. So to do that, let's go ahead and select add. We'll go down to format and then select opacity. Now, if I were to set this opacity all the way down to zero, we'll notice that the sequence text is animating from an opacity of 0%. So that means over the duration of our project, it's going to slowly fade in. But you might notice some issues with the background, which we'll need to address, and it's coming in really slowly. Let's speed this up by going in about half a second or so, selecting our sequence text and pressing O. So now it'll come in much faster, just like so, but it's still creating all of this chaos in the background. That is because when the opacity is set to zero, Apple Motion doesn't see any additional letters in this text. So you'll notice, taking a look at the background, it says subscribe and it doesn't have the last two letters. So to fix this, we can actually go to our opacity and just set it to a value of 0.01. So it's nearly zero, 
but you'll notice now that we have all of the proper spacing that we need as the title is being written on. Additionally, I want this to slowly animate into position. So let's go to the parameter. We'll select add format position and on the Y value. So it's going down. We can go ahead and just set this to a negative value. And now if we push play, we can see all the text flying in. I definitely wanna make this a little bit smoother. So let's go to the spread and drag that up a bit. And that's looking nice. I also wanna add some easing. So let's go over to the speed and change it from constant over to ease both. And I might even extend out the sequence text just a little bit so it's a little slower. So that is looking super cool if you ask me, but if you don't want the animation to also apply to the backdrop, you only want it on the primary title, there's a super easy fix for that. All we need to do is go to our outline group, which contains the clone layer. Then we'll go up to filters. We'll go down to time and we're gonna select scrub. After that, we're gonna change it from offset from current frame over to first frame. And then we can just drag this value up to a place where we're happy with the animation. You'll notice though that the background is no longer moving. That is because our tile filter is below the scrub filter. So in motion, everything's rendered from bottom to top. So to fix this, let's just drag our scrub filter down below the tile. And now if we push play, we can see everything is animating as it should, but the subscribe text also receives that intro animation. Finally, if you wanna send this over to Final Cut Pro to use over and over again, you can push Command S to save, and just call it infinite title and throw it into whatever category you like. I'll throw it into my tutorials category and push publish. What's super great about this title is because we used a clone layer setup, we can simply select our subscribe text, go to text, go to format, and now I can write anything I want. So we can just type in like and subscribe. And now all of the titles in the background will also reflect those changes. If this video was helpful to you, please consider pressing that like button as it does help tremendously. Also make sure you check out my brand new Apple Motion Masterclass if you want to take your knowledge of Apple Motion even further. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And with that being said, I cannot wait to see you in the next one.